Welcome everyone. In this tutorial we are going to take a look at cleaning up animation data captured with Cinema MoCap and we're going to clean that up using Blender. So to get started the most important thing is you need to check your settings before you capture your animation. So in order to do that and bring up your capture window we're going to go to Window, Cinema Suite, Cinema MoCap. And as you can see this is probably familiar to you but there is a setting under advanced that is the transformation type. Our transformation type when it comes to blender is going to be selected as matrix. It's very important that that is selected before you start recording. So once you have your transformation type set to matrix and you do your recording you're going to go ahead and navigate to where your animation is. So that's under animations. Then we're going to select our animation right click and go show in explorer and we're going to copy this address just so it's easier to import into blender once that's finished we're going to open up blender as you can see I've already imported the file into blender but I'll show you how to do that you go file import collada then you're going to paste your address that you copied from Unity into this address bar and then you're going to select your animation and go import Collada. Since I've already done that I am not going to import, I'm just going to cancel that out. I'm also going to close this window right here. So for clarity's sake I've been using uh, an input profile because I've my native background is from Maya um, to navigate around. So if you hear me saying things that sort of don't work or if you're using the default Blender inputs then you can go to User Preferences in the File menu then under Input you can select your preset here. I'm just using Maya so if you find you can't find a menu or something like that you can just type in what the keys were and it'll show you what uh, menu that was and it'll give you the Blender equivalent. So we're going to go ahead and scrub through our animation first off just to see where all of our discrepancies are or our pops and our joints so we're going to go ahead and select the timeline and right click and hold the right click and we're going to drag across if you take a look you can see a few weird things going on one is the right foot is popping a little bit and if you notice where the neck meets the shoulders there's also a little pop right about here that we're going to need to clean up. It's very important when you're going through these animations and cleaning up that you go very slow through them so you can see if there's little pops like that. So let's go ahead and start cleaning up. So in order to clean up we're going to need a window called the graph editor. In order to bring that window up, we're going to go to this corner here, click and drag upwards, and we're going to set the mode of this window to be Graph Editor. Now we're going to take a look through animation again and see which joints we're going to clean up first. So in our case, we're going to clean up the right foot to begin with. So the bone that we have associated with the right foot is called Ankle Right. So under this window over here in our outliner, we're going to expand the armature. And right here is where your bones are. And we're going to go ahead and expand all of our bones here. So we have a clear idea of our hierarchy. Now we're going to look for our ankle right bone. We're going to select that. And as you can see, our graph editor changes a little bit. Just expand that for better viewing. And we have a whole bunch of different kinds of transformations here. So we know that from our window up here that there is probably going to be a discrepancy in the Z rotation axes. But we can better find that out if we look. Well first let's deselect our uh, eye here so it 
all of our joints are and their translations are invisible. Now we're going to select the Z quaternion rotation, make that visible, and we'll bring up our guy here and take a look at his ankle. Now when we scrub, we'll notice that there is a correlation between where his ankle is in this uh, perspective view here and in the graph. As you can see, there's a bit of a dip there. So we're going to go ahead and correct that. We know that our model is not going to be moving its feet at all in our animation. So what we can do is select our keyframe here at the very beginning. Whoops. And I'm shrinking and scaling this uh, by holding Alt and right clicking. Then up and down is scale in the Y axis and left and right is scale in the X axis. And to grab and move around you hold Alt and push the middle mouse button and drag across. So we're going to make sure our time slider is on this key right here where the beginning of our animation is. We're going to drag a marquee across the key right here. Then we're going to push W and we're going to drag upwards until his foot is completely flat. Should be about on zero right here. Then we're going to click to place that key. Now we're going to go ahead and scrub to where we want our animation to end. So that's probably about the 120 mark. Yeah, say about there, let's end it. We're going to go ahead and take a look over here and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to look at our joint. We're going to select the key and push W and drag upwards until it's completely flat on zero. Now there are keys in between that are still giving us a bit of trouble. So there are two ways to do this. You can either move all these keys in the method that we uh, just went through, or we can delete all the in-between keys. And then Blender will interpolate when it bakes the keys, and it'll add keyframes in between. So to do that, we're going to drag a marquee over some keys that we want to delete, press the backspace button, and click Delete Keyframes. We'll just do that until we have a nice line going here making sure that we don't delete our keyframe up here. And there you have it. The right ankle has been cleaned up in the z-axis. It is important, however, to check from all angles because there are more than one axis. So we're going to go ahead and scrub and see there is a bit of a jitter on another axis. So we are going to deselect the Z quaternion rotation in our, from our view. And we're going to check out the Y quaternion rotation and see if there's any correlation. So it looks like this is the one that's giving us a bit of pop in the uh, from side to side here. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take our first keyframe, drag upwards. Oh, this is actually in the wrong axis. So we're going to actually deselect Y and go to X. There's our problems right here. So as stated before, we're going to do the exact same thing. Select our first keyframe, push W, drag down until it's at a good position. About there. Looks good. Then we're going to go to where we want our animation to end, which is around 120, remember? And we're going to go ahead and select that keyframe and bring it down to where the zero was. Take a look until it looks like it flattens out. Looks like that's about right. Now we're going to delete the keys in between by selecting, pressing delete, 
getting rid of these in-between keys. Oh, off just a little bit. Let's just bring that up so it's equal. Perfect. Let's scrub again and check it out. Looks pretty good. So now that the foot is done, we're going to take a look at the another place here that might have some popping. We noticed earlier that in the chest area there's a bit of popping. So we're going to go ahead and take a look and see where that starts. So right about here is a pop. We know that's the shoulder center bone. So we're going to check it on our hierarchy here and find shoulder center which is right here, and we're going to select it. Now once that is selected, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the foot. So we're going to turn everything off, and then look in our rotations, and see where the spikes are. Go ahead and gesture view so you can see a little bit better how the spikes are going. And we can tell here that that's probably where our spike is happening right there when our animation tweaks out a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and delete these keys in between. We could move them, but it might take a lot of time. Actually, I will show you a little shortcut that has to do with undo that, simplifying these curves. So in order to do sort of simplify all these dots out here and make your life a little bit easier. What we're going to do is go into the file menu under user preferences. We are going to go to add-ons and under add curve we're going to make sure that simplify curves is checked on. So once you've checked it on we're going to go ahead and do control spacebar I'll bring up your search menu. I believe in Blender it's just spacebar. But then we're going to go ahead and type simplify F curves. And you don't even have to type the whole thing, it's already auto completed. So we're going to go ahead and select that. Oops, we're going to reselect shoulder center, find out where a bone went. There we go. Just have to select the bones again. Now, as you can see, our curves are a little bit smoother. So all that data has been eliminated. Which is good. Our pop is almost all gone. Still a bit of stuff there. So as you can tell, there's another curve here that we're going to have to deal with. It's a big spike downwards. So this is where the simplify curves really comes in handy. So when you want to simplify your curves, you go into this error over here. And we're going to adjust to be about 0.030 see where that gets us. So as you can see, there's much less dots here. But you do sort of need to pay attention because if you smooth too much you'll lose some animation uh, resolution. But what we can do now is individually grab these points and move them up to even out the curves. That's nice and even. You can see it's much cleaner now. So we do have, however, a lot of keyframes where we don't need them. And we can either bake keys within a certain range to eliminate them, or we can delete them. I'll show you both ways. So in order to get all of our extra keys past 120 frames where our animation ends and how we're going to delete them, we're going to select all of these bones here. And you either click and then shift click to select a grouping of them. As you can see, we're getting more and more curves added to our graph there. And 
Then we're going to scrub towards our frame ending range, which is around 120. Then we are going to zoom out a little bit too far there. We're going to drag a marquee over the frames we don't want. Zoom in and make sure you're not selecting over your animation end range. So that's exactly where the slider is. Then we're going to delete them. So push delete and backspace. And it looks like we're missing some on the selection here. Oh, no, we're all good. Okay, now once that's all complete, I'll show you how to bake out your animation and bring it into Unity. So what we're going to do is do the same thing that we did when we were trying to find our f-curves function, or simplify f-curves. So we're going to hit control space, or space, and we're going to go type in bake, and look for bake action, which is right here. Now our start frame we want to be on 1, our end frame we want to be on 120. We want to check uncheck only selected, and then we want to check pose. So we want the keys from our pose to be uh, baked out. Once that's finished, we'll push OK. And there we have our animation. It's pretty solid. Bit of a hiccup over there, but if you find it, then you can just clean it up really quick. So now we are going to export this for use in Unity. Before we bring this into Unity, we have two more things to do. One thing is to set the end of our animation. So we can do that by clicking here and putting, since our animation ends at about 120 frames, we're going to put that into here. It's just so that when we bring it into Unity and we play it, there's no uh, sort of dead space going on here. And it ends abruptly when the animation ends. The next thing we're going to do is go to frame rate and check that 30 frames per second is selected. If you don't do this and you bring it into Unity, there might be a little bit of popping, which is undesirable since that's what we are aiming to clean up. So once you've uh, done that, you can go ahead and export. So we'll go to File, Export, Colada, find a place where you can find your animation, and export it to that location. Once that's finished, bring up Unity, go to Assets, right-click, Import New Asset, select your animation, and import it. Now we'll go ahead and preview by selecting your animation, going to the Animation submenu, and then pressing Play. As you can see, our animation looks pretty good. There's no heavy popping at all. And, uh, yeah. So thanks everyone for watching. This has been another tutorial from Cinema Suite. Have a good day.